To gain a better understanding as to how our immune system actually works, let's take a look at the following diagram, at the following illustration. So let's begin on this side. So let's suppose some type of infection actually took place and let's say that a bacterial cell got into our tissue. Now, once the bacterial cell is inside the tissue of our body, infection begins and the innate immune system is the first one to actually react. And what happens is special cells, immune cells known as mast cells and basophils begin to release chemicals such as histamine. And what that does is dilates our blood vessels and it brings specialized phagocytic immune cells known as macrophages to the site of infection. So this is what a macrophage actually looks like. So we have different types of organelles, for example, a nucleus, and we also have these digestive lysosomes, these tiny vesicles that carry digestive enzymes as well as an acidic environment. Now, what the macrophage does is it engulfs our pathogen, in this case, our bacteria, and it creates this vacuole within which we have that bacterial cell. And some of these lysosomes fuse with this phagosome, and now this phagosome contains these digestive enzymes and acidic environment as well as the bacterial cell. And inside the phagosome, we begin the process of the breakdown and digestion of that bacteria. So the macrophage essentially engulfs that bacterial cell and begins the process of digestion. Now, the macrophage is actually a type of cell we call APC or antigen presenting cell. And what that means is after it kills off and breaks down that cell, it takes one of the antigens, one of the proteins or nucleic acids or polysaccharides from that bacteria and it places it onto the surface of that cell, but it places it onto a special type of complex of proteins known as MHC, which we spoke about previously. So recall that MHC stands for the major histocompatibility complex. And this is a class two complex because it's used to actually communicate with other leukocytes as we'll see in just a moment. So this antigen presenting cell, our macrophage, creates the MHC class two complex. It places it on the surface and it takes an antigen, which is shown in red, and it places it onto this region on the MHC class two uh, complex. Now, what happens next is another type of leukocyte, another type of white blood cell can now interact and communicate with the macrophage as a result of the presence of the MHC class two complex along with the antigen shown in red and a special type of T cell known as an inactivated helper T cell, which is a CD4 plus helper T cell begins to approach this MHC class two antigen. Now, what do we mean by CD4? Well, CD4 is simply a special type of glycoprotein that is located on the membrane of T lymphocytes and specifically on the membrane of this inactivated helper T cell. And what this CD4 glycoprotein does is it actually binds and interacts with MHC class 2. We'll see that there is another type of CD glycoprotein we call CD8 glycoprotein and that glycoprotein only interacts and binds with MHC class 1 complexes as we'll see in just a moment. So we have an inactivated helper T cell a type of lymphocyte, T lymphocyte, that can now go on and bind to this uh, MHC class two complex that contains that antigen. So we have the binding process takes place. And when they bind and form this entire complex, the macrophage begins to release a special chemical known as interleukin one. 
and the interleukin 1 essentially goes on to and interacts with this inactivated helper T cell and what that does is it activates that helper T cell. Now once it's activated it basically uh, re uh, releases from this macrophage and it moves on and it finds a B lymphocyte. Now remember B lymphocytes are part of our adaptive immune system just like these helper T cells are but the B lymphocytes are part of the humoral immunity of our adaptive system while our T lymphocytes and our helper T cells are part of the cell mediated immunity so we see that the humoral immunity and the cell mediated immunity interact with one another to carry out the same exact function to basically kill off these pathogens and kill off the infected cells of our body. So once we activate that helper T cell, it basically goes on and finds a B lymphocyte that contains the MHC class 2 and uh, the class 2 complex along with that same antigen that was found on this macrophage and they also bind and they also form a complex and once they form a complex these two cells begin to release these special chemicals known as cytokines and what these cytokines do is they basically uh, induce this T cell, the helper T cell, to begin to clone itself via the process of mitosis. So mitosis of the cell takes place and we form many of these cloned helper T cells. And these cloned helper, uh, helper T cells begin to release another group of cytokines and these cytokines go on and then these cytokines induce these B lymphocytes and T lymphocyte cells to basically mature and differentiate into even more specialized cells. So these B lymphocytes basically produce plasma cells as well as memory cells. While the T cell, when it reacts with the cytokines, it produces cytotoxic T cells, also known as killer T cells. And these cytotoxic T cells contain the glycoprotein CD8, uh, CD8, and we'll see exactly what that means in just a moment. So let's take a look at these plasma cells. So these plasma cells have very extensive endoplasmic reticulum as seen in the following diagram and that's because these plasma cells their function is to basically form antibodies. So remember the plasma cells and the memory B cells are part of the humoral immunity. They're part, they're part of the antibody mediated immunity and what that means is they're involved with forming and storing antibodies. So the plasma cells form antibodies that are complementary to these specific antigens that we spoke about earlier shown in red. So these antibodies are complementary to the antigens found on this bacterial cell. And these plasma cells form a bunch of these antibodies that can now move around our blood system and lymph system and they can bind to the antigens of this bacterial cell. Now memory B cells instead of forming these antibodies they essentially store these antibodies within the cell and they can essentially react with a bacterial cell of the same type that reinfects our body at some later time. So it's the memory B cells that essentially allow our immune system to be adaptive. It allows the adaptive immune system to actually learn from these pathogens that infect our cells of the body. And finally, our T cell differentiates into the cytotoxic T cell and this contains the CD8 glycoprotein on the membrane. Now, the CD8, uh, the CD8 glycoprotein basically is responsible for binding to the MHC class 1, the major histocompatibility complex class 1. 
and this is found on our infected cells of the body and that's exactly why the cytotoxic t-cells are those immune t-cell immune cells of our body that are responsible for seeking out and locating the infected cells of our body and once they bind to those infected cells they basically release special powerful proteins that are capable of digesting and breaking down the membrane of those cells lysing those cells and killing those cells and that's exactly why the cell mediated immunity the immune system that deals with our T lymphocytes is responsible for finding and killing off infected cells while the humoral immune system System is responsible for killing off these bacterial cells, pathogens, toxins, parasites, and so forth that infect our body. So this is a general overview, a very simplified overview of how our immune system actually works.